Right folks, have a look at this lovely table. And now, while you're looking at that, I'm going to speak to the man who created it. So Alan, tell us a bit about Stalingrad and your model, because that's what it is, isn't it? That's starting at the beginning, it's Stalingrad. Yeah, hi Dan. Um, yeah, it's uh, representing the uh, Lazur chemical works as a, as a, a, a theme. Um, and from the books that we've got historically that show some of the tenement blocks and the sewers, um, but really created um, out of my mind after that, that I thought would be right on the table. Yeah, so um, of course it's a playable table because we've just had a game of Chain of Command on there and it's something that you designed to be a playable table, wasn't it? It's yeah. not a diorama piece. No, it's, um, it, they're all 600 squares. Um, some are dioramaed and fixed, uh, but most of them are generic. They can all be swung around into any position to create different layouts on a different day. Um, the sewers can be um, covered over completely and buried, or they can be totally open to fight through, which gives us our um, 3D game, and we can go up and down through the buildings and through the sewers, which you'd always expect from a kind of Stalingrad game. Mm. Um, so I created it by... Um, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tell us how, how no, you it's, went about okay. creating it. So then, it's, yeah. um, it's an MDF base of, of 12mm MDF, uh, covered with a 50mm um, blue styrofoam. Um, and from and glued on, but before it's glued on, all of the sewers were cut, drawn and cut out with a jigsaw. That's why they look so straight and neat. You know, it's not mm -hmm. cut out afterwards; it's cut out pre, um, pre glued. Mm. Um, and once they're all um, fixed in and it's glued down, then um, I've found a great use for printed brick paper. Mm -hmm. um, and I've cut, put a card, uh, a backing card edge, along all the foam in the sewers. Um, and from there then I've glued um, the, the, the brick paper, the printed paper onto that. And in fact, I think, remembering back, I glued the brick paper onto A4s of card and then cut the card to the size and glued it into the foam and mm. drilled out all the holes for the sewer pipes, etc. And then really anything that's water, anything I ever do as water is, is the muddy, muddy or the painted finish and then gloss varnish. Mm. You know, no resin or etc. Clear anything. It's just just readily available, available gloss varnish. Yeah. Um, and, and how about the um, the brick built buildings? Was that was that a similar system that you used to create the brick effects on here? Yeah. Um, it's the printed paper, and uh, it's glued onto uh, the face of MDF, mm. and I use an MDF inside, MDF outside to the factories, and they're sandwiching a foam card. Uh, and that means that then on the inside, because it's still MDF and smooth, I could give the painted factory effect of the painted walls. Mm -hmm. And on the outside, I'd glued the paper to it. And once it had set, uh, once it had gone, uh, gone off, I um, scalpelled all the, the windows back out. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, wherever there's a window with uh, the broken um, Georgian effect, the wires, um, that's actually just galvanised um, steel from the do-it-yourself shop and oh. chopped up and it's actually encapsulated. I've put that in before I put the second layer of MDF across. So it's trapped in the foam. I cut the foam out, chopped them out to whatever destruction I needed on them, mm. and then um, it's, um, trapped them inside so they can't fall out or come off or they're not loose. Mm. Um, they'll all hold nice and tough. And then all the fascia um, brickwork um, is, is just uh, backing card, right. glued and, and scored, scored with a biro to give the brick effect all the way around to get those lines into it. Yeah. Yeah, let's move around a bit there. So uh, another striking feature is the railway line as well. So that's something that you, you said is almost like a jigsaw that it fits together, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I based all of the um, HO00 railway section onto um, very thin plywood, mm. uh, edged, um, covered it in the grit to create a stone effect underneath. Um, and then numbered all of the pieces underneath and so I can create any layout and just um, put in the connectors, the HO00 connectors you get at the ends mm. and push them all back together and then um, I've occasionally I've drilled a hole straight through the railway and the plywood so that you can put a pin through and pin it onto the foam of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so every so often there's a small red dot onto, on the sleepers and that shows you where the hole goes straight through. So we pin it down and it doesn't move when we're, when we're playing because things get kicked around. Mm. And um, with all the scatter that's on this layout, as soon as you bump a board, the board moves, all that scatter falls between it and it'll slowly create a, 
a chasm in every board. Mm. So um, we use electrical tape, um, two inch electrical tape, and wrap it around the whole board, around the edge, and it holds everything together. And you saw today, nothing's budged and no, mm. there's no gaps and it stays nice to play on. Great for when we did the couple of shows we took it to, but when we game on it anyway, I'd do that. So we, we have a, yeah. a, a good game without um, cracking it to pieces. And then also the railway sections, are, they're, they're small for 28 mil, but they're acceptable. Mm. But because this is Stalingrad and they had a narrow gauge railway, it kind of suits. Mm. Um, but then you have the problem of not having the right um, livery, the right rolling stock um, scale, and they're expensive in O scale. So I bought some HO old um, um, stock, peeled all the tops off, and rebuilt them in the right scale, just out of card, card and um, balsa wood, mm. um, and uh, toilet rolls for the top on those curves. Oh, is uh, that what they are? They made a, the toilet roll itself, oh, and yeah, then yeah. then the the um, the oiled or tarred surface is actually just the toilet roll tissue glued on as uh, well. So, yeah. make good use of toilet rolls there. Yeah. Um, it's, it's literally everything on here scratch built. I mean, obviously not the the, the HE 111 is a kit. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise but it's all made out of plastic card, mm. foam card, MDF. Um, balsa what about, wood. What about the crane? Um, the crane, ah, yeah, the crane is a, is a kit, but mm. I'm sorry, offhand, I can't remember the, the company. Um, but I can track him down if somebody was looking for the. You oh, know, yeah. um, the, the, the it looks the, great, and of course, with, with your paint job as well, because uh, another striking thing about the table is how well everything is painted, how well everything's been distressed, whether, whether that's just sort of the washers or the highlights on the painted stuff but, and then also the detail as well like the bullet holes We've got bullet holes all over haven't we in the in the walls and stuff yeah so, the tenement blocks took a real hammering yeah so yeah. Um, tried to portray that by chopping them out and and adding um, the uh, weathering powder so it's that dusty burnt hole look mm. from weathering powders and then uh, multiple drill holes over the factories to, uh, but it's a bit awkward trying to get the do you get black holes or do you get chalky white holes so oh, they're hardly noticeable but they're everywhere and they're the chalky white holes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and this is of course the, the bright yellow here that's a striking feature that you, you mentioned that um, you got an idea from enemy from the gate is that right yeah yeah um, because in the film it portrays the uh, Lazur chemical works which this was loosely based on mm. and um, during that, that, that battle um, in, the, in the film um, he finds the, the Russian sniper because um, the boy that's looking after both of them had got sulfur on his shoes so he knew where the, the Russian sniper was hiding where he, mm. one of his horns were his, his positions but actually in reality the Lazur chemical works um, was, was never attacked Adolf Hitler um, um, stopped Paulus before he attacked that and sent him off into one of the uh, the Red October, I think, mm. um, factory. And so it was never actually assaulted. And it was called the tennis racket because the shape of the, that massive um, complex was inside a railway that from the air, the German bombers looked down at what looked like a tennis racket made out of um, railway lines. Right. Um, but inside there, in actual fact, um, the Russian sniper school in, in, in the war um, really did um, train in the chemical works, that's where they were based. Yeah. So it's kind of connected to the film in that way. Yeah. And, with, and, and myself and Aid A. Deacon, um, who's uh, done a lot of the figures for the board as well, um, mm. we decided to put something in. He said, sulfur would look great, really unusual, but and mm. everyone would want to know what it is. But yeah, and it, uh, it worked great. Yeah, it was good fun. Yeah. Is so. that, uh, are these. Is this more chemical works over here? We've got the giant plumes of smoke. Yeah, we? I tried to just create um, the, the chemical fuel tanks. So they're not as large as you would expect in scale. Mm. You know, they stand four or five inches high, and some of them are smaller than that, and there's pipes around. But I'm, I'm putting that in as my interpretation or adaptation of, a, of chemical tanks, mm. not giant fuel tanks. Yeah. So. And then I created some fun smoke for them to be burning. Mm. You know, and at, at, at connecting them all with trenches mm. and uh, holes through the, uh, the, the sides of the tanks themselves. So, so it makes it more gameable. Everything you've got to be able to play on on this board. You've got to be able to get into every position and get figures in and out. Um, so yeah, 
yeah, know, as much as possible. From, from playing, you know, on the in the tenement buildings, on the on the levels and everything, everything can everything can come off, but everything can, can fit on. All the figures can fit on as well, can't they? And you've even got the boards that can come off the back of the tenement buildings, haven't you? To to replace them with more battered, more battered back bits of the building. Like, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, like this this one over here. We've got. In fact, that's when the game that took a battering, didn't it? From Richard's. Yeah, I, I try to come up, every time I, I do any modelling, I try and come up with something uh, innovative, mm -hmm. something different, um, which gives me an interest, you know, uh, keeps me excited when I'm wargaming, when I'm building terrain, mm -hmm. um, to come up with an idea that I haven't seen before or that, that I think will work, right? So I'm always trying to come up with a, something original. And I don't remember seeing anywhere where on these big buildings where you can't get your hands in all the time, that, that, that you can find an easy access so you don't use them as well as you would or as often as you would. Mm. So I thought if I make the, the one side slide off, you could alter whether it's a, a completely collapsed side and you can get your hands right in, you can change which um, floor you, you're positioning because they all pull out as well mm. as half floors and then you can put full floors in with the balconies on. So yeah, it was on some of them, I gave them that extra touch so you can alter it from one game to the next. It just gives you that twist so mm. we're not playing on the same thing forever. Yeah. And as they're generic and 600 squares and they can all be turned around and you can re-map out the sewers or cover them totally because they've all got roofs that you can um, fit on, flatten on and, and covering buildings or rubble and they don't exist at all. So mm. you know, it's a mix and match terrain that's uh, uh, really a generic diorama yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's and most problem. things just really come off and all the scatter comes off and all the boards are flat yeah because the, the scatter eventually it breaks, but the scatter is really important isn't it it just it lifts it to another level in many ways i mean i guess you've got a big bucket full of the stuff you? yeah a big selection of buckets that this mm. has to go back into yeah not totally into the separate buckets but yeah every time we get out the different colors different Aggregates and um, yeah, because you know, the, the amount we use stuff around the tenements is more grey, isn't it? And mm. the stuff around the factories is more brown, I guess. Basically, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it looks absolutely fantastic, and thanks very much for bringing it over to show us. You're so welcome, and thanks for having us. We had a great time. Yeah, I'm glad you could um, take some pictures of it and give, hopefully, give other people from seeing this in the magazine some ideas of things they can create from nothing or do this self yeah because if anyone's inspired that's really the magic of anything like this yeah um, anything i create or, or, or my friends create and if you inspire someone that's that's the win mm, yeah yeah so that's great thank you yeah thanks very much Alan. this video has been produced by wi prime wi prime is war games illustrated magazine's online members club as a WI Prime member, you get access to all War Games Illustrated videos before anyone else. We'll keep you posted on what's new via the Primetime News Bulletin delivered to your inbox every Friday. If you are not a WI Prime member, you're missing out on loads of benefits, including access to the War Games Illustrated Vault, freebies, discount vouchers, PDFs of the latest magazine, and more. Find out more about WI Prime by following the link.